We're very honored to uh, have with us two distinguished neurosurgeons, Dr. Kevin Amar and Dr. Jason Comier. Uh, this question is from a distributor out west, uh, Jason, and it's sort of a two-part question. One of them is, uh, you said that you've used a lot of MIS systems, and and how do you find the mirror system to be better or different? The, the, the profiles with the with the mirror system, it's so much smaller, so your incisions are smaller. You know, when you're trying to line up and you're doing something really crazy like a, you know, a 10 or 12 level surgery, and you have all these, these tiny incisions, your incisions get bigger and bigger and bigger until they're almost two big, solid, long incisions. And so you start scratching your head thinking, well, why didn't I just do one big open incision and just, you know, it's pretty much, you know, an open operation. So with the mirror system, you can make literally very, very tiny stab incisions, get this instrumentation in. And then when ultimately you're, you're contouring the rod, um, I just can't tell you how easy, much more easy it is to, to drive a smaller rod through this tissue, through these tissue planes, um, you know, just in lieu of taking a, you know, a larger rod, which we used to always think. Now that innovation is now taken over, and you know, Mirus has taken that, taken that great leap uh, with smaller, more durable instrumentation to be able to do long constructs with much, much smaller instrumentation, and that's and that's where we're going. That's that's where it needs to go. So that's why I've kind of converted my practice uh, primarily to utilizing this system because I can do more with it because it's smaller and it's twice as durable. So again, just to, to kind of summarize a few things, um, I'd say that there's just a huge uh, broad spectrum of applicability of the more products to, in my practice, and I think throughout any spine surgeon's practice, I think that it finds its home very, very easily. Um, it's very easy to use relative to um, dealing with other rods that you've had, especially I think if you if you try bending this rod relative to a cobalt chrome or a cobalt chrome plus rod, I think you'd really be stricken by the ease of, of malleability. But not only that, it does have strength and durability um, that in addition to that. So, you know, for example, doing that, that T2 to the pelvis case, you know, it's much easier to bend, to contour to what we were trying to achieve, but it didn't yield when we were doing our reduction. It didn't then conform to um, the forces in a way that uh, decreased its efficacy in the correction. So I was very impressed with that. And I think it's gonna really find a home in a lot of deformity surgeons' hands when they see this unique combination of attributes. And then finally, the sagittal alignment system is a truly promising and uh, groundbreaking technology that I think will truly outvalue through real-time data. We uh, look forward to hosting other calls. I wanna take uh, to a moment to thank Dr. Comier and Dr. Amar sincerely for, for having taken this time and uh, spent uh, you know, uh, quite a bit of time uh, in, in their practice uh, testing out this alloy uh, and how it fits into the clinical practice. So we, we thank you for your time. We thank all the participants for their time. Uh, uh, everyone have a good uh, weekend and uh, you know, continue to stay safe during uh, this uh, COVID times. Thank you.